Moon Landing is a duo work between myself, Helen Caddick, composer, and textile designer and artist, Margot Selby. And Margot's creating an enormous textile installation that will hang in Somerset House in response to a piece of music that I've written entitled Moon Landing. I remember seeing your work in 2020 at Collect. Yes. Yeah. And I remember commenting to you, it's so musical your work, I can hear music just by looking at it. I did a talk at Collect that year and I was talking about when I set the loom up, you know, how I listen to music and how it gets me in the rhythm and like the making and the process is often driven by music. But also that work itself was all actually inspired by mathematics. The loom was the very first computer. It was what led to the very first computer. It, it was the binary system of lifting or lowering the threads and the punch card system that was designed to kind of help to program the lifting and the lowering of the threads that then got translated to be the first um, punch card computer. And that's one of the things we found is like a sort of link between weaving and music. I mean, there's many links, but one yeah. of them is like the mathematical patterns that you get yeah. in both weaving and music. For this collaboration with Margot, I wanted to find a narrative and I happened to come across this astonishing story that women had been involved in the creation of integrated circuits and memory cores for the Apollo 11 space mission, which enabled the moon landing in 1969. And some were Navajo women. What was so interesting is when I started looking at this story of these women, and coming across these images of a rug woven by Navajo women and a circuit board woven by Navajo women because the parallels are so clear. This has been really exciting for me to work in this way where we're telling a story because my work is often very, very aesthetic and it's often very visual. It's about the visual stimulation. It's about creating an impact on people within a space. And I don't usually work in this way where I tell a story. And so I've, I've absolutely loved the, the story that you've brought to this. These amazing weavers that were given this opportunity to create the circuit boards because of their dexterous skills. And they're not very well known about. And I don't think they no. were recognised properly at the time. No, they weren't. We started the piece with the narrative and talking about these women that were involved in the Apollo 11 moon landing. And so the warp was put on thinking about like the phases of the moon, thinking about those women and telling that story. But I wasn't 100% sure what the design was going to look like because I wanted to relate it directly to the music that Helen was writing. So for me, there's a very strong relationship between music and weaving because music is made up of all these woven textures, these bubbling rhythms, these patterns, these blocks of sound colour. And for me, sitting at my grand piano, which I absolutely adore, this really old bluthner, and the idea of the strings stretching away from me is like sitting at a loom, the way that Margot sits at hers and I was thinking it would be amazing to have stringed instruments like harps, violins, cellos, to mirror the loom and to bring the music to life. I wanted to really think about the materials that were used and I found a supplier of uh, British wool. So all of the weft throughout the piece is British wool, which is really, really lovely. I started thinking about the moon and colour and how the, the, the different phases of the moon reflect light in different ways which creates all sorts of different amazing colour combinations and I, so I wanted to look at this kind of graduation of colour and light throughout the piece of the fabric but then specifically the patterns and the rhythms within the piece have been directly picked up from Helen's music. It's amazing looking at the colours that you've come up with and the patterns and how you're responding to the score that I've written. This piece of work, capturing all these different rhythms and, and getting different patterns and different rhythms sitting next to each other, all the different time beats that you've got throughout mm. the music. So it's giving this new life and a new dimension. It's almost less ordered than yeah, work yeah. which I've made before, mm. but I think that's going to make it more exciting. And for me as well, this is a hugely exciting project because when I've worked with 
artist work before, it's always been artists that are no longer alive. So to work with a living artist, <laughs> it's just brilliant that, that to, talks have back. These, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to have all these conversations and and us both get so excited and kind of riffing off each other's ideas mm. throughout this whole process has been so invigorating. When I first sat down, the very, very first thing I wanted to find a way of echoing was this clattering sound that Margot made when she first sits at the loom. So the opening is a series of random colenio sounds across the strings. My favourite bit of the weaving so far, the, the beginning part, is actually in direct response to that colenio which you talk about at the beginning or you've written at the beginning, that, that kind of scattering sound of the bows on the, on the instruments, is yeah. it? And so I wanted to create this kind of random scattering pattern and visually it's just come out really beautifully. That is exactly what it sounds like when you sit mm. at your loom, mm. that clattering sound, it's lovely. I've always been absolutely fascinated by the moon landing and the different attempts to get to the moon that is still ongoing today. And I've noticed this recurring theme of an indicator light inside the space module and wanted to have that in the score, almost like a pulse or a heartbeat. So I've got this little idea of an indicator light in the cabin of the spaceship. So that's like a little tiny motif that raises its head every now and again throughout the score. So there are moments where all the musicians are playing at full pelt and they stop suddenly and then you're still hearing this tiny indicator light. And I interpreted that indicator light almost like a heartbeat. It was like the heartbeat of the spaceship. And I created this red line which is short, long, short, long, and that will appear every couple of metres throughout the whole length, and it's kind of that heartbeat throughout the whole work, and it ref refers to this rhythm. And you can actually see it coming through underneath the loom at the moment. During the score, there's this bubbling idea, which for me echoes the weaving of the women that created the integrated circuits, and also Margot weaving all these threads together and stitches. So once I've written the main themes at the piano and I've started to build up layers when it's becoming impossible to physically play all the ideas that are going on in my head, I come up here and I start sketching into software. And this is completely um, like sketching, but with sound colour instead of paint. I'm putting it all together to produce a score and parts that I can give to the musicians. They will then sculpt the music into sound. been trying to work out the best way to interpret the, the rhythms visually. So I started by sort of taking some of the rhythms and almost taking the notes and imagining that, that, that they are appearing in different parts of the cloth mm -hmm. and then just translating that into kind of rhythmic patterns with the, the, the linear mm -hmm. marks of the weft. And then with the stripes, you know, I'm, I'm taking key parts from the music and trying to capture those. So the, the softer colours here, that they're kind of like the gentler, quieter parts of the music. So in a way, my score is the journey to the moon, but I was also thinking about Margot sitting at her loom in the way that the Navajo women were weaving, that they all come together into one person in Margot and all her stitching and weaving is enabling that journey to happen.
this pink part here, it's this, what do you call it? It's the violin and it's sort Sweeping of squealing. Sweeping up like a glissando. Yeah. Yeah. Yee! It's a yeah, glissando, yeah. That's, so that's the glissando. <laughs> In the score there are definite elements of lightness and darkness either brought about by dynamics whether it's going to be really loud or really soft or the building up of layers or the way the instruments are used so i love going from huge sound to suddenly exposing one element that's been there all along but by peeling away all these layers suddenly we then become aware of it One of the things that I always try to capture in cloth is contrast and it's probably the same with music so I'm always trying to capture light and dark, bright and neutral. Yeah. So if I was going to take for example, I don't know, a light, a dark and a bright, I would probably see the light being the violin, the dark being the cello and the bright being the harp. I really love the sort of cinematic quality to your music. It's, it's really moving and, and evocative of emotion and I find it quite uplifting. But this piece in particular, when I heard it, I just, it's really, it's really blown me away. It's just so uplifting, something really epic about it. I just love it. When I see you sat here, it's like you're weaving music. The sounds and the colours and the palette that you choose is is equally uplifting it's so amazing it feels like very great honor that we're collaborating like this you know it's really oh, interesting that's exactly how i feel i feel so honored to have this music that's connecting to the to the work it's brilliant it's very very exciting times this is the biggest piece i've ever made it's really really exciting i've actually got a team of weavers who work with me so the, the loom is actually going from seven in the morning till seven at night and it, it will be like that for several months. I think the total threads, single threads in the whole piece overall is going to be in the region of about 29,000. It took about a month just to set the loom up before we started weaving. So it's, it's a lot of work but I think we're all really, really enjoying it.
that was just the most exciting and uplifting experience, seeing how people were responding to the music and the textile simultaneously. You could see people were literally visually moved by it. This is the biggest piece of weaving I've ever made and it was quite an ambitious feat. There was six weavers, we worked from seven in the morning till seven at night. Many, many, many hours of work and it's just so rewarding. It's just so lovely to see how powerful and impactful it is and, and what a positive response it's having with, with the audience. I just found the music so inspiring. The way the rhythms interact and then you have the textile in the background is beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful piece of music and I think it, it, it really um, interacts so amazingly with uh, Margot's work um, hanging here. Such a fantastic uh, spot for the work and um, to have the, the air filled with Helen's music was just, um, just really magical. It was. To see this here today is unbelievable. The way that the music has been specifically composed for this is just quite extraordinary. I mean, scale is just something else. Yeah, I love it. The sheer colours and vibrancy of the and patterns in the music and the textiles is magnificent. I loved it. How lucky are we that we are at Somerset House in this most amazing historic place with these two extraordinary artists, Margot Selby and Helen Kadic. The two of them, what they created, it's beyond genius. It's like a renaissance piece of art. I was so emotional, I couldn't stop crying. For me, as the gallerist, Cynthia Corbett Gallery, representing Margot, I couldn't be more proud
first experience seeing the music come to fruition and I think having it at, at Collect, um, it really is bringing craft to life and adding another dimension to the craft world, making craft really exciting. I feel really elated by that. It was so, so exciting to have the music performed with all the musicians here underneath Margot's work and it's just thrilling, so, so exciting to share it and I hope by doing so to share the story of the women that wove the integrated circuits because that was the driving force behind the music that I've written and it's just really wonderful to be here.